hi guys welcome back once again to the channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how to make this basket design pant in nigeria we call it trouser okay so in this video you are going to learn everything concerning basket design okay if you've not subscribed to this channel subscribe click on the notification bell so that you'll be updated okay so guys i encourage you to give this video a thumbs up okay a thumbs up is just a click away and if you're a returning subscriber i welcome you back to the channel all right so just everybody sit put and let's dive into the video <laughs> for this tutorial we are going to be starting off with our pattern paper here on the table and here also I have my straps I've already cut them out and so and this is the fabric I'll be using for the upper part of the trouser so that's my baseline my hip line my crotch line nail line and full length of uh, trouser okay so on the hip line i'm going to divide by four my hip is 44 but i added two inches to my hip making it 46 so i divided 46 inches by four and i got 11.5 so i'm marking in 11.5 on my waistline hip line and crotch line so after marking i'm going to connect as you can see me doing okay so after connecting i'm going to divide my waistline by four that will give me nine inches but i'll be adding that to this front piece so i will mark in 10 inches that is plus one inch for that right all right so the next thing i'm going to do is to connect from the waist to the hip line okay just be observant and take note of um, the places i'm marking all right so now that we are done doing that i'm going to impute my crotch extension now to get it the way i calculated mine was to divide my hip measurement by 20 this is for the front crotch okay so if we are working with the back crotch i'm going to divide by 10. so after dividing my hip measurement by 20 for the front i got 2.2 okay but i marked in 2.5 approximately so after marking in my crotch extension the next thing i'm going to do is to connect it from the crotch line there to the hip line so i'll be using my arm hook off to do that but first off i just want to use my pencil to connect the curve so after marking out the curve with my pencil I'm going to use my marker to magnify the line all right just make sure that you place this appropriately okay so now I'm going to use my marker to magnify the line so that you guys can see so can you see so that is that with the crotch extension and curve the next thing I'm going to do is to mark out my um crotch extension like i'm going to measure from that baseline to the extension to see my overall measurement did you get so after doing that i got 14 inches i divided 14 inches by two that gave me seven inches and that is what i'm marking in on my crotch line my knee line and the full length of this pants okay so after marking um, 7 inches, I'm going to connect with my ruler. Okay? So you connect. This is just half part of the trouser. This is just like dividing the trouser into two. Did you get? So after marking out my lines, okay, I'm going to divide my new measurement 
by 2 my new measurement is 21 inches dividing that by 2 that will give me 10.5 so this 10.5 i'm still going to divide it into 2 again to give me 5.25 now i'm going to place this 5.25 on the middle line that we've created earlier on so i'll place it like that did you see and i will mark in front and behind my tape i'm going to mark 10.5 did you see so this is how you are going to mark for your nail line and also for the full length of your trouser or pants that is the ankle area so now that i've marked that i'm going to connect the line from my crotch line to my nail line this is for the inseam side and i'm also going to connect um at the at the side part of it sorry guys so for the side if you have your hip curve you can use it to connect but if you don't have your hip curve you see um you are still going to use your ruler to do that okay so and you'll be fine so now you use your armhole curve to blend up things together can you see that so now the next thing i'm going to do is to divide my ankle area by two okay so it's 13 divided by two i got 6.5 now that's 6.5 i further divided it by two and i placed in and i placed it on my middle line and i marked out just like i did on my new line okay so that is it with the um, ankle measurement so the next thing i'm going to do is to connect my lines from my ankle measurement up to my crotch line okay so if you have your straight long ruler you can use it at this point okay so i don't have a long ruler so i'm using my tape so you can also use your tape if you don't have a long ruler and just be careful while using your tape okay so i will not displace your line all right so i'm just going to mark it out at the at the other side of um that's the inseam of our trouser and we are good so fast forward to the waist that okay i'm going to be marking in my waist that now you guys know that i've not done that so i'm going to mark in four inches that's your nipple to nipple measurement right and i'm going to go down by five inches this is for my front pants okay all right so after doing that i'm going to connect the lines after connecting the lines i'm going to mark half inch beside this very line and um i'll trace down to the five inches point so that is it for your dart so soulmates the next thing that we are going to be doing is to go down by one inch at the crotch line of your front pattern okay and at the side you are going to come up by half inch and you connect okay then from that that leg the one close to the side you are going to connect okay just watch what i'm doing and connect as so all right so now that we are done with the front pattern because right now we are done with the front pattern so i'll be using my pencil to draft the back okay so that will not get confused so now i'm marking one inch at the crotch line and at the um waistline here i marked two inches then i connect we are creating our back pattern now okay i hope you guys can see this line although i'm still going to use my red marker to magnify it so on my waistline i impute my waist measurement that's 10 inches if you guys can remember and at the hip line there i impute my 11.5 inches for the hip measurement okay that is that was the measurement we used for our front pattern right okay so now we are going to connect with our armhole curve guys there is hip curve in the market if you have your hip curve you can use it for this i've not really gotten all these instruments but with time okay i'm going to get them so now you're just going to connect like this 
so guys at this point i noticed that my camera went off okay but i'll be explaining what i did so at the knee line there i went i marked out half inch okay and at the crotch line remember i told you guys i divided for the back by 10 so what i got was 4.4 and i marked it there and at the inseam there i also marked in half inch that's at the knee area just watch and you will understand what i'm explaining so from that point i connected all the way to my ankle area so that was what i did for the um back that was that for the back measurement and as you guys can see i added another pattern paper this is because my baseline for the uh, initial pattern did not cover the height for my back measurement so that is why i added this so now at the waistline there i'm coming up by two inches guys i don't know if i'm being too fast but i guess you guys are following so add that to your back um crush line okay you're going to come up by two inches that is if you have big hip if your hip is big if you have a smaller hip use one inch okay then um, i went up by half inch again for the back just like we did for our front pattern okay and you connect as usual did you see there is nothing much to it so that is how we um created our back pattern so guys can you see that i'm going to use my red marker maybe to differentiate the front from the back just to make sure that you guys can see these lines so after this the next thing we are going to do is to mark in our dots remember we've not marked in our dots for our back pattern so for the dot i'm still going to take my four inches just like i did in the front okay and i'm going to come down by six inches guys here i came down by six inches but while i was sewing i let her reduce the dots for the back to three inches because i noticed that the dart went too down did you get so i would advise that you mark three inches while marking out yours okay because you wouldn't want your dart to be going down up to the hip area it should just be above your bum did you get okay so after that you mark in your half inches your half inch sorry beside your uh, initial line and you create your dart now to mate after creating your dart the next thing is to trace out your back pattern onto the pattern that is beneath this front one okay so if you've watched so far please subscribe to this channel for detailed videos click on the notification bell so that you'll be updated like you'll be notified each time i upload a video okay please give this video a thumbs up like this video guys please like this video all right so after tracing out your back measurement onto the pattern beneath the front one you are going to use your um, marker to trace it out so guys now on your waistline you are going to measure down 16.5 inches okay this is i'm just trying to mark out the upper part of my pants okay the upper part of my trouser the one that is not going to carry the basket design so uh, i marked out 16.5 this is because i'm going to use half inch to sew right okay so if you want yours to be at 16 you mark it out if you want yours to be at 18 or 14 inches it just depends on you so for me i marked out 16.5 inches now this is the front pattern here i've added my seam allowance all around as you can see please don't get confused here i'm going to use this pointer to illustrate now at the inseam i marked half inch all around at the waistline i also marked half inch and at the side seam here i marked one inch this is for the front pattern so this is our allowance for the front so this is the back as you can see i've traced it out and i've also added my seam allowances all around our back pattern okay so guys what i'm doing here is to 
portraits out that 16.5 inches i initially marked for our front pattern and i'm going to cut this out but before i do that i'm going to go to the ankle area of this pattern okay so i'm going to mark out one inch at the sides both the side seam and the in seam i'm going to mark out one one inch and from that one one inch i'm going to connect it up to the 16.5 inches that i marked out okay so you are going to draw a straight line so guys you are going to draw the line up to the 16.5 inches here that we marked and for the inseam you are also going to connect the lines okay So guys, after cutting out, you are going to label your pattern in seam, your side, okay? You are going to label it for the front and also for the back. So this is the front, we have our in seam and we have the side and this is for the back. Remember that you are going to cut this two, okay? Two for the front, two for the back. As you can see, I've already traced out my markings on the other pattern so i'm going to repeat the same thing here okay so you are going to mark 2.5 inches and you connect your lines i use 2.5 inches for this basket design okay so once you are done marking out your 2.5 inches you are going to connect with your ruler So guys after marking out you are going to place your straps on your lines like this okay i'm just illustrating to you guys how you are going to sew this so you place it this way and you sew so while i was sewing i placed um horizontally first before the vertical ones okay so you take your straps one after the other and you sew okay so did you see this is the design that we are trying to create the basket design did you see the look now so guys I've gone ahead to cut out my um, fabric I placed my pattern onto this and I cut my fabric and my lining this is for the back this is for the front and I've also cut out my basket design it's still on the pattern paper I'm going to sew it like this before I will out the paper did you get so if you're making this for someone i would advise you to charge that person because you see this straps here it's not easy to make this took me a whole day to achieve these straps and the sewing everything okay as you can see this is another day and i'm still filming this okay so don't just put to that person in terms of charging it is a lot of work and stress all right so this is uh, my front piece for the trouser and this is the back piece now i'm going to show you guys how we are going to sew this okay let me take this front as our example so guys now this is the crush to crush right now guys if you want to sew this i'm going to show you how to place that you know we have our um two patterns here i want you to take note of this that is the reason why i have to label this inseam and side okay so you have to go ahead and label your side you will not be confused when you want to sew okay okay this place that i labeled as my side you should know that it should match with this side of uh 
trousers, all right? Now, this is the inseam, and this is the inseam. Because if I place this one here, that I have here as the inseam, and here as the side, it will match up with this, okay? So you just have to be very careful and take note of that. So now, the way you are going to place this is, to place your pattern paper upwards like this, okay? Then you bring your your lining and you place, okay? Then you match them up together. The three of them, your fabric, your pattern, and your lining, you match them together and you pin down. You pin down, this will help you while sewing. Okay? Make sure that everything is very, is well matched up, okay? So after matching this together, I'm going to sew with half inch. After sewing with half inch, I'm going to top stitch. Okay, so now, when you turn it, you will see that your fabric and your lining is upwards this way, while your pattern is downwards. So, while top stitching, you're going to top stitch this way. Did you see? Only your lining should be this way. Okay. And you do what you top stitch because we top stitch at the lining part, okay, so that it will not affect your mem fabric. So you top stitch on your lining. So after doing that, this is what um, the trouser is going to look like. So I leave it, I have sewn this to be down this way. Then after you iron okay do you see everything mashed up together so this is what you are going to do to every of your pattern before you start to sew okay before you start to sew and while sewing you have to make sure that these lines are matching up okay for instance this one and this one they will have to do you see they will have to match up everything will match up so guys, can you see, I've gone ahead to sew this like I told you, this is it, and I've also top stitched, I don't know if you guys can see this, I've top stitched, this is it. if you top stitch on the lining side, it will not show on your main fabric area, did you see that, so you have to iron this down, I've done it for uh, the whole fabric, so the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead to join my pieces together okay so you can join your trouser this way um crush depth to crush depth that's your two um front pieces you can join the both of them this way or you can as well join one of your front and one of your back together but you are going to first of all join the sides if you are joining one of the front like I have here and one of your back you have to join you have to start with the sides and not the crotch depth you do get so for this you start with the side and later on you join um, um, your crotch side you get so so whichever way you want to join your trouser you can do that so guys I'll just go to the sewing machine to stitch this up I'm going to sew everything that it as you can see i'm not sure i'm going to that okay and i will show you guys before adding my band okay so guys i'm done sewing my trouser piece as you can see okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to attach my band right around and here is for our zip i left um like about eight inches for our zip okay so now the next thing i'm going to do is to remove all this pattern paper at this point you are free to pull out the pattern papers out so i'm just going to pull it out okay um attach my band and my zip and that will be it for the trouser part of this tutorial okay so the next thing i will be doing is to show you guys how to create a basket design for peplon 
okay and for your jacket and somebody also requested that i show how to do this for a bustier So guys moving on to the peplum part and the jacket and the bustier yeah? I'll be using this pattern paper for the um, jacket and peplum and the cardboard sheet I'll be using for the bustier yeah? illustration okay so just like the way you fold your peplum normally you're going to fold it this way and you fold again So guys for the jacket design all you have to do is create your basket design on a rectangular pattern paper using the length of your jacket okay once you are done you cut out the shape that is required okay don't cut out the shape before creating the design did you get so that is that for the jacket so guys moving on to the peplum part okay if you're adding this to your blouse you are going to mark out your waistline right at the top part of your peplum but if you are using it for a sleeve you are going to mark out the round ankle that is if you are adding this to the ankle area of your sleeve so now i'm using this as my sleeve so i marked out three inches at the upper part there and at the lower part here i marked out the sleeve length this is what you are going to do to yours okay so after marking out you are going to cut out you cut it out so after cutting out you know that we are going to pipe this so guys now that we are done cutting it out this is the design this is the peplum design i'll attach it at the ankle area there if i'm sewing for myself okay so wherever you want to attach your peplum design that is where that's the measurement you are going to use to mark out the upper part of your peplum okay so now you are going to pipe right around you are going to pipe your peplum right around this is to give your peplum um, stability mm, to be firm so you pipe this way at the two sides you are also going to pipe like that for the down part and for the upper part before you sew it to your um, actual fabric or to your blouse or to your sleeve whatever you are making this basket design for so guys that is that with the peplum design now moving on to the bustier design yes guys if you've not subscribed to this channel please subscribe and if you've not given this video a thumbs up please give this video a thumbs up like this video okay that is the only encouragement i get from you guys please like this video also click on the notification bell so that you will see my new uploads okay so you'll be updated so if you want to be current with this channel just click on our notification bell and you will not miss any video from this channel so at this side of the carbon pepper i'm creating my basket design as usual mark your two inches or two and a half whichever measurement you prefer you mark it out so at the other side of the carbon pepper i, I have already um drafted out my bust here yeah? okay so you mark out your design here draft your bustier the other side so after placing your straps at this side sewing it up you are going to flip to the other side of your bustier and cut out so you keep on marking this design up to at least your half length okay of your bustier right now this is the bustier i've already created my bustier okay at this other side of the pattern i will also want to add that basket design is not that friendly okay it is better appreciated like it is best when you sew it with uh, a style that doesn't come with that that wouldn't have any that because if it is a style that has that like this bust there now it is going to distort your design okay so i don't know but if you still want to create a bustier basket design 
style okay this is just the illustration on how to do that so you place your straps this way okay you sew it up place the other way around like this vertically and horizontally you sew it up so guys with all this being said that will be it for today's tutorial okay if you've not subscribed to this channel uh, uh, what are you waiting for <laughs> subscribe to this channel please okay also give this video a thumbs up click on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any video from this channel share this video tell a friend to tell a friend thanks for watching see you on my next one bye